All right, so, so what I want to show um, here with Amazon are two things. First is uh, deployment um, through Amazon. So traditionally, um, Natrix Logit oh, and I have to introduce myself, I remember that. Uh, so it's Yoli Sotnikov again, uh, Director of Product Management with Natrix. Uh, and I will talk about how we work with Amazon Web Services here. Uh, so two things that we do with Amazon. First, we use it as a delivery mechanism. Uh, traditionally, Netflix Auditor is a software package. It is downloadable and installable. Uh, however, customers who are already using infrastructure as a service, uh, uh, whether it is with Amazon, whether it is with uh, Azure or CenturyLink, uh, we give them an option to uh, roll out a pre-deployed machine with Natrix Auditor and all of the prerequisites pre-installed. Uh, so it makes it a bit easier and quicker. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to log into this um, um, Amazon tenant. If I can type my password here. Wow. Um, so what I have here is um, actually let me do another thing. So two things. All right, and I will. Um, so this is marketplace, uh, and I'm already. It should be logged in. All right, I am logged in. Um, so basically, if I search for Netflix here, there are a bunch of options, but uh, basically uh, two different options. First is uh, bring your own license, and then second is uh, different tiers of uh, pay-as-you-go. Um, so it makes it a bit easier, makes it a bit simpler. Uh, so let's say if I go with, the, with any of these, um, if I want to add it uh, to my infrastructure. Basically what it asks me to do is to choose the region, uh, the instance type, connect it to the, you know, to, to my network, basically configure the uh, uh, VPC and then the subnet and security group. I won't do this right now because it takes about 15, 20 minutes on the Amazon side to, uh, to bring this up. Uh, and I actually already did it um, this morning, just before coming down here. Um, so you can see that I have an instance running, but I did not actually uh, log into this instance yet. So it is just the only thing I did, I, I powered it up, uh, basically. Uh, so I don't even know the, I don't even know the this thing. All right, so, so it propagated. I need to decrypt the, pass the password. It should be available for like... Okay. All right. Four minutes. <laughs> That's hmm? 20 minutes of waiting for uh, the instance to be up. Take longer when you've got a live demo to do. Uh, well, it's been up and running since... The demos never go well. With like eight, uh, In practice, they always work flawlessly. <laughs> In practice, theory and practice are this. In theory, theory and practice are the same. In practice, they're not. All right. Do, 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 do. So at least you see it's live, and it's secured. What let you in? Yeah, it's not a. <laughs> it's not a recording. I uh, just want to add something regarding yeah, the one video we mentioned before, because uh, um, a couple of people are here from Europe. Um, the flag that you can show that you record it is mandatory to run such a tool in Europe. Otherwise, the EU <coughs> regulations would uh, uh, stop you from, as a vendor from using it or as a customer from using it. That's just something which is important, which some other companies are still running into. Also, it's obviously available as a download. Uh, it's about, a, I think, 100 megabytes uh, for the application itself. You can also download it as an, as a, as an appliance. So if you guys are running uh, VMware or Hyper-V uh, on-premise and want to just import in a, an instance, you can do that as well. 
um, as well as be able to obviously deploy it uh, in the cloud. So is that that on, on-premises supply? It's the same here, I thought it was uh, 2012 R2 with SQL Express installed. Uh, whether it's on Amazon or on-premises, it's actually the same. You can do this, right. yes. Okay. Right. And, you, and you can use a different SQL backend as well. Okay. So obviously, especially for a large organization, yeah. a lot of our organiz- a lot of companies, you know, less than a thousand users, they can usually get away with SQL Express. Uh, the databases, for the most part, are relatively small. Um, but obviously, for larger uh, enterprises, we recommend uh, yeah. obviously the full version of SQL. Also, again, he mentioned it earlier. If SQL's not a different box, you get some additional availability and failover and survivability of that data. Yeah. So if the database is corrupted, it's not a big deal. You can, again, re-import that data from that audit archive. So, you know, especially with compliance, you need to be able to store the data forever. Be able to say, hey, I didn't realize the server was down for the last week is not usually going to go over well with your auditors. So, um, you know, not a big deal. So we have a session running. All right. And the way this lab in Amazon is set up is I have like a gateway server into that. Um, and then the uh, other instances are um, deployed into a uh, private subnet uh, behind that. So uh, let me try once again. It just takes four minutes, not four hours. <laughs> Did you make the appropriate sacrifices before trying to uh, <laughs> Actually, yeah, it was just before coming down, I was busy like washing off the traces of that sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right, so, so what I can do then, um, what I was going to do, I was uh, hoping I will be able to show um, how the API actually works. I guess instead I will just uh, have to open some PowerShell scripts and show them. <laughs> I have the AirWatch one open if you want to take a look. Oh, or you can do that actually. No, I actually have that. So let, let me just uh, really quick uh, uh, open this one. Um, actually, let me... Are there any questions in between? That's usually when sales is necessary to ask something. <laughs> Um, talked a lot about uh, SOCs, HIPAA, PCI. Yeah. Do you ever get pulled into e-discovery issues? Um, uh, no, we so because we don't deal with the true. content specifically, we don't index what is inside the documents. So uh, we are not typically we are not part of the e-discovery process. Um, where we may be of, of a little bit of help is kind of an adjustment area when. Uh, the e-discovery reveals that you know these documents are of certain importance, or these documents or mailboxes uh, are related to a particular case. And then, if you want to know more details, more context around that, what was happening with them, who was accessing them, then Netflix Auditor can can kind of augment that picture with more details about, hey, you found this file, here is what was happening with this, you know, here is the audit trail for that particular file. So we are not necessarily there for e-discovery itself, but we can come in like as a second phase. Okay. Thanks. And you can probably, oops, that's a bit too much. So, um, 
from from the API perspective, uh, since the machine is not running and probably we won't have time within 10 minutes to revive it anyways. Um, just really quickly, um, wanted to show the script here. It's, um, it's pretty simple PowerShell example. Uh, what it does, it connects to uh, Amazon Web Services CloudTrail. Uh, it then processes only certain types of events because obviously there can be like huge numbers of different types of events with different details, different information. And so it, it is an example, right? So it takes only uh, identity and access management events like account created, user account created, group created, group deleted, user deleted, um, access key pair created, deleted, um, user added to group, user removed from group, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so uh, showing this as an example, uh, we basically show how to transform the data and um, so these are parameters, nothing interesting here. Um, so you can see the supported events uh, like create group, delete group, etc. Um, and then everything else is sort of uh, processed in a default manner with uh, fewer details. And then what is important is uh, that once we collected that data, uh, if I scroll down just a little bit, right here, you can see that um, uh, we then translate that data that we collect from uh, whichever external services, uh, we transform that into our uh, activity record uh, with the predefined fields, so that when we collect this, uh, it shows up in the same search interface, it shows up in the same uh, reports in the same context with the same predefined fields. So we have who, we have object type, action type, uh, what was the object what, that was modified, where it was uh, modified, uh, more context, uh, when, and then the station from where the originating call came from. Um, so with that we have a unified audit trail across multiple uh, systems and environments. Um, and Jeff, can you switch over to um, uh, to your stuff? Actually, and there's a PowerShell script down here as well if you want to play around with it. <laughs> okay. So you want to run this? Uh, yeah, so just to show you real quick, this is uh, this is the one for AirWatch. So we do uh, have a mechanism built in to be able to pull down data from AirWatch. So it's relatively easy. You crank this up, and in this case, I'm just going to run it manually. And it's going to go through, theoretically work. There you go. Pull in 22 records. And now I can go in, and through the search mechanism, I can just type in AirWatch, for example, and it's going to go through and it's going to bring up all of the uh, AirWatch records. Again, I apologize, this is super tiny, but uh, one of the other things, too, is I can just do Google, for example. So if I want to see what someone's actually searching, I can do that. So now you can see that not only can I see data within the network as far as, again, Active Directory, Group Policy, SQL, what people are doing, but I can see what they're searching for on their phone. And that might actually you know, dovetail into... You know, especially if we go into more of a, a civil or, or criminal uh, issue, to be able to see what's actually going on. So you can see how you can really kind of pull all this data together into, into one place where I can make it searchable uh, and accessible. So, so was that API then doing a, a native PowerShell call to, um, to AirWatch and then transforming the data into your format to put it in? So, so, so the API is like really almost dumb. It's like really, really simple. It only has basically two functions uh, and three, three endpoints. So you've got the activity records. Um, uh, and so if you do the post call to that, it's restful, right? Uh, it, you have to provide either XML or JSON <coughs> with the formatted activity records. And it is a script that grabs the data and transform that into our format. Uh, but basically, as soon as you give it to the, to the API with this post uh, call, uh, it feeds that in, and this goes into 
the long-term archive, this goes into the database, all the retention settings are applied. If there are reports, it will go into reports, it will become available through search, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then um, you've got the same endpoint with uh, enum. Um, um, parameters, so if you do the if you do get on this particular uh, endpoint, you basically get all the records that we have. Uh, and it, uh, it will give you sort of a checkpoint, so uh, you can also use the same endpoint with, uh, with POST again, uh, and give it like that checkpoint as a parameter, it will give you the next uh, page, basically, next like thousand events. So, so that second bit is you can then write your own reports and grab anything that's yes. in metrics. And then so the first one, because you mm -hmm. used AirWatch as an example, uh, uh -huh. even though that's a VMware product, that's not the native VMware integration that you have. The first example is, let me think, I've got, I want to order to access who's been logging onto my firewall, for example. You don't mm -hmm. have a native connection to a Correct. Juniper, Junos firewall, so you right, right, right. write your own so, uh, so, yeah. connection. So the idea, is, the idea is that because this is all just RESTful API and there is a convention about you know, how the data should be formatted, uh, it doesn't really matter what scripting language do you use, which platform you run it uh, on, um, what are the means of getting that data from whichever system it is. Um, you, if you have like a syslog listener and you grab it from there, you can do that. If you grab it through PowerShell, great. If the system allows you to do that, do that. Uh, if you just, I don't know, read event log through WMI or whatever, you can do that. Uh, so whichever way you do, even if you just read the text files and somehow transform the data, you can do that as well. So you can build your own importer for any exactly, data. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so API is not just for controlling Netrics for grabbing reports and generating stuff yep, or other kind yep, of things, but yep. you can pump data into Netrix yes. from whatever. Yes. Okay. But all exactly. of that smarts that you do with things like Active Directory event information isn't going to be applied to this data that you're pulling because you don't know Obviously, anything about yes. the meaning of any of it. Right. So so whatever, what, so when, when we create this collector on our own, or we do all the data collection and transformation, uh, but eventually what it goes down to is we create that same activity record with all those fields that I was showing um, and write it into our own archive so and data. activity <laughs> field, if for example I'm using a, an AD connector to log on mm -hmm. to something else and you're grabbing information from that log and it's got the, say access even, I'm trying to think of a non-Windows example. You can extend that. So, so if we you have the, the same username in, mm -hmm. in that other util and the same user in the active directory username. You, if you yeah. search by the user, and it will correlate the two. It will show in the same in the same uh, firewall is a good example because right now there's a PLC running with one firewall vendor who uh, sees a use case in merging the data. I don't know exactly which direction, but the, the background is a PCI related case. Because if you want to be PCI compliant, it's not just what we da what the data we have; it's firewall information okay. which has to come into, and um, <clears throat> that's right now just ongoing. And it looks actually good because last week we went, uh, we came from the Gardner conference, and one of my other colleagues and, and Jeff we briefly stopped by. So it's a kind of interesting use case, and it's probably not the last one. Oh, definitely. I mean, if if you're <laughs> going to have this information and in a pool of auditable information, you want as much as possible. Yeah, and so, uh, so yeah, so, so we have uh, like this last endpoint here for search basically gives you all the flexibility of search. So you can post uh, an XML with parameters and um, get, you know, detailed or very specific narrowed down thread of uh, data that you need. And again, you can automate that, you can schedule that, you can have a service that runs uh, um, and just you know keeps getting this data from us, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, so a few examples of uh, of the API use that we had uh, um, uh, seen already. Uh, the SAP example we already talked about. Uh, we have a customer, um, pretty large customer, who is doing ArcSight uh, integration. So they collect all the native logs with ArcSight uh, for like all the correlation and everything, but. They also augment that with the uh, same audit trail from Netflix Auditor so that they 
have more context information when they actually do investigations, when they actually have any rules that you know pop up and start alerting, so that they can quicker and easier see what actually has been happening. Uh, gives them more context details. Um, we also have an MSP partner who uh, is using the API data to uh, populate one of the widgets on their client portal. So every client has their own dedicated portal where they see sort of status of the services that they get from the service provider. Uh, one of the widgets there is like security information about like AD logins and things like that. Uh, so they just populate that with, uh, with the data they get through this. Uh, so, so those are just a few examples there, and like I said, this is very new for us, and we expect way more use cases coming up. But uh, uh, with that, I think uh, you know we we are more or less uh, out of time. So we probably have a few minutes for more questions if you have. So, do you have plans to extend the the sort of more deep analytics that you do with the events? through into the cloud trail? So, so right now there are several uh, different directions for us, uh, right? So one of the uh, obvious directions is to extend the breadth of platforms that we support and we believe that we will be doing a lot more with uh, uh, different cloud infrastructures including uh, Amazon and Azure. Um, it is a little bit different crowd for us, different audience. Yeah. Um, you know, talking more about DevOps rather than our traditional kind of user who is sysadmin mostly or IT manager. Uh, but we are definitely tapping into that. 